สารกามันไงมาปมเงาดึงเบียไอ้ปกตาโชว์สอจ่าสิกันบ่าไอ้งุมบูปกอาจ่าซิงซิงซิงซิงส์นั่นอะพอร์ตเดอะแลงกูจ์เบบ yeah it is p a n g a l o p a n g a l o oh it is p a n g a l o p a n g a l o yeah welcome to the podcast ba dum ba welcome to the show ba dum ba are you ready to do it clap your hands up and put it beaner Beaner, you can you say beaner? <laughs> I don't think we can say beaner. Yeah, you can say beaner. Why? <laughs> Because I think I think it's a food. Group. I don't think you can. <laughs> I think we have to start over. I think we have to start over. What to count down? Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the podcast. Ba dum bum. Are you ready for show? Ba dum bum. I got fat on my eyebrows. Clap your hands, everybody. Beaner. Be- God damn! damn All right, you know what? That's a good take. That's we'll it. Do- that's a good oh, take. That's man. it. That's our song. Uh, am I gonna get in trouble from the movement? The mo- the beer the, movement. The, the Hispanic movement. I don't know. They like it. They do. I think they like it now. They own it. No, seriously. Should I start over? Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Are you ready for show? Show. But I'm done. I'm ready to dance it out. Clap your hands, everybody. Be. No. <laughs> No. Oh. No. No so welcome to the podcast. Um, listen, I uh, want to start off by trying to defend my friend Mike Faverman. <laughs> Now I'm gonna tell you something about Mike Faverman. He's in a lot of trouble. What's the story? I don't know much about it. Uh, Kalila is the one that told me about Can it. Can you give us the audience the story, Kalila? Um, a quick synopsis is uh, he writes this girl on Facebook saying, "Hey, drinks, dinner," and the girl politely which is which is shut the fuck up. Let me, get, let me give my front. synopsis. <laughs> Number one, notice in that request there was no um, sexism or right. anything derogatory. He started off well. Oh, he started off strong, normal, normal, and, and Christian. Christian. So go ahead. And then the girl politely responds with, "Hey, like you know, um, I am sorry if I gave you the wrong impression by adding you uh, by by friending you on Facebook that I wanted to date. Like okay. I'm sorry if I gave you that impression. That's, It wasn't my intention. That's negative. Totes polite. But that's negative. How? He was being polite, right? Invite. Let me say something right now. This is why in I in the just, world. Let me just say something right now up front. In the world that we live in, there's poverty." And there's children in Ethiopia and Darfur, and other places like that who don't mm. get dinner. They don't eat, right? <laughs> and they would say yes to a free drink and and a meal to Mike Faverman, and he was just trying to feed another human being. And that's mm. for me. Okay, so let ahead. me finish the synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> he then Welcome to <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> All right. So what what do you say? What does she? So then what did he say after that? He then says, "Oh, you know, I hope I didn't give you the impression that you were out of my league because you're not." Mm-hmm. Number one, she probably was. And then um, <laughs> I mean, he I, continues. Have you seen him? No. Yeah. He continues to. He call constantly her... looks like he's eating spaghetti. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like spaghetti is yeah, the only thing it, he eats yeah. ever, like right. he's ever eaten. And so he continues to call her a pig, a fat con, okay. and, right. and blah blah blah, and it's like this long, long, long essay of why she's. Basically, a, a a fat cunt for for politely turning him down, mm-hmm. and so the girl, I think she's a friend of some female comics. It turns out, mm-hmm. um, confided in these female comics, and the female comics kind of put this Mike Favorman on blast. Is what I gathered. Big time, yeah. So Favorman's on blast. I texted him. <laughs> what did you? T- <laughs> I texted him. I said, um, "You okay?" <laughs> and he goes. Yeah, man. Thanks for reaching out. <laughs> That's what he said. That was reaching out. That he was like deleted me out. his Twitter because he was his getting Twitter a Twitter. lot of. Um, a Let shit, me tell you about obviously. my favorite man. Okay. Don't tell us about it. It's that all we need to know about him. That no, that right there. I'm going to say right now is bullshit. Why? Because that's not who he is as a man. What he does in his privacy yeah. is exactly who he is. Yeah, but that's not private. That, that is was on absolutely Facebook. private. That's Facebook. That's the a way social media hits, website. The, the way he hits on a woman and immediately gets But that. Doesn't make him a bad. I mean, all around an evil person. I'm more concerned when what people do in the privacy of their homes versus what they put out into the world. What they what they show the rest of the world. If that's what he does when he's at home, 
eating his spaghetti. Can I tell you? <laughs> All right. Like, that's that's. <laughs> Can I say something? That's a reflection that you, of who his. Are you about to feel really bad right now? He's you know, married too. I know. But oh can my I say god, something? he is. Can I say something? Yeah. His brother and his brother's um, wife were in a car accident. I don't know if you guys know that. No. Yeah, and then um, they had a son, five year old son, and Favorman brought in the son, right? And he put the kid through private school, and um, was a really he's a really good father. You know what I mean? And let's just say something, right? I just made that story up. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the, the, the podcast. podcast. Da, da, da. Welcome to the show. Show. Ba, da, da. Um, all right. Um, I just made that. Up. I made that up. I made that. You try up. to save him. I you try, try to save, save him. him. Yeah. You know what? Good. Yeah. I. I mean, I. I, I, made that up. I made the whole thing up. You know, I don't even know if he has a brother. But my point <laughs> is, is this. Um, <laughs> but I want to say this is that you know I've known Favorman since he started. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's a pretty good comedian. You know and. Um, you know, it's I, I what he did was wrong, all right. But and I, I it's, it's one of those things where I'm very I have a difficult time. Chest, I mean, I think that if I if he called me and said, "Do you think I did a wrong thing?" I'd be say, "Yeah, that was a really bad thing you did." But is it wrong for me to still like him? I think no. it's not wrong if you see it from like it's the way I see my uncles. Like some of my uncles are so ass backwards, nineteen fifty. Well, your uncle type. murdered somebody. Yes, I know, and I still like him. <laughs> so you right? still like him? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I I see it. I see them more as, um, I, you have to understand them for exactly where they come from. Mm. So he comes from a place that probably isn't very. <sighs> You know what I mean? Like cultured or aware I, yeah, or but he's you just, kn- but you he see doesn't have sides of your like uncle, right? Yeah. The people that don't know him aren't privy to, right? I mean, they, right. So my uncle killed my other uncle <laughs> with a machete. So, so with a, yeah, with a machete because my uncle took away his home and left his five kids, one of which had cerebral palsy out in the rain in the middle of a typhoon. Did so, you make, yeah. did you make up the cerebral palsy? Who the palsy? fuck stole Mike <laughs> Favorman's spaghetti meatballs? Like, that's all I'm saying. It's like, what, what incited that type of behavior? There's a cause and effect there. With my uncle, he killed somebody you because don't know his how livelihood he was, was at stake. You don't know what, and, you know, okay, sure. what if it's cultural? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If you see Mike Favorman as a guy who probably is stuck in the 1950s and that's all he knows he's and Italian. he's a sexist pig, then that's, that's how you see <laughs> Does that him. something? That, I mean, can that... No? Can, can that say <laughs> no? hello? But I get that, though. Like, I, I kind of only judge people by how they treat me because sometimes I don't know that other side of them. Mm -hmm. And if they've only ever been kind and nice to me, that's all I'll ever judge them for or hold them, you know. I do have to say this, though. There is a group of comics because Favorman's a uh, a comedy for comic. And I'm not going to name any other names. But there was a core group of comics when I started that had this agenda of, like, weaving out female comedians. I mean, they would outwardly say... Women aren't funny to their faces, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of these women that they said it to have become extremely successful, oh. i.e. Chelsea Handler, mm-hmm. i.e. Whitney Cummings, these types, you know, they had to endure this, the, this, the, you know, se- sexism mm-hmm. in, in, in the comedy game and, and bl- blunt and brutal sexism. I want to say mm-hmm. something. Yeah. I think it's bullshit to say that those girls are successful because they were treated badly by men. No, Imagine if men... That's not what I said! Because you say, yeah, there's a resilience there and the fact that they're able no, what to... I'm saying, sweetie, just fucking listen, okay. is, is that I'm, I'm not saying about their success. I believe that those women... I mean, they're my... Fucking Chelsea saved my fucking career. Mm-hmm. You know, she had me on her show when no one in Hollywood would want anything to do with me. Mm. And I needed to get on her show so I could... Promote my shows. I, it was dire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I am extremely grateful and I love her immensely. And I've always been, I have always thought she was funny. I've always thought that Whitney Cummings was funny and women. I bring more female comics to open for me than any other comic in, in around. Mm-hmm. I love a- any kind of comedy, especially when it's different from my own. Mm-hmm. You know, I like variety. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that. I think that Favorman it was a part of a group of guys, you know what I mean, at the comedy store, for some reason or another, just never really felt like females were funny. 
Mm. But that's besides the point. This is a woman that he's written in his private life that he's trying to date. This woman is not a comedian. Yeah, I know. So mm. he's trying what, to get some pussy. <laughs> but if that's how you, am I not right? You try and get pussy. I mean, my I, God, what it's kind like of? It's like when Ari Shafir. I'm just saying, when Ari Shafir did that joke about that girl Damien without an arm. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? That whole thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they people try to lynch Ari. You know what I mean? Damien did a video on YouTube saying, you know, you know, you know I'm a, like a victim. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he. He said it on TV and, you know, and helped us. And a lot of people texted me and called me saying, oh, that Ari is a piece of shit. How are you friends with him and stuff like that? And it's like, but people don't know who she is. Oh, what? like so, so people who don't, what who I'm aren't saying, known get are okay to be treated like shit. We don't know who this lady is that he texted Mike Faberman. Do you know her? Apparently, there are girls who know her very well. Who it what was if she, what if she's you know this was unwarranted, like it was unprovoked. Trying to paint her. Am I in trouble he, for, no. with he, this line of thinking? I I hope I know where your where your heart is, and I know for a fact, and we've talked about it, that you you would never talk to a woman like that, and you would never deem that acceptable. Now, imagine, I've never raped. I've never molested. Okay, I've never all right, done any all of right. that. Now imagine, okay, Punch can I just say this? <laughs> Thumbs up. This girl apparently has a boyfriend and that's why she turned him down. Now uh-huh. imagine if Mike Faverman talked to me. I got a message the exact same way oh. to me. Yeah. And you're my boyfriend. Yeah, but who is her boyfriend? <laughs> what does that mean? It, ma- it, it matters. It, it, all right. If, if it's David Duchovny's, it was her boyfriend, Dave, he's, it really matters. It matters. If he works at Kinko's, it still matters. But just not as much. Ah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I quit. I quit. So why? I'm not going to. Why, why are you mad at me right now, babe? Because for once, I want you to defend women. I am going to defend them. Say it again. <laughs> I want you for once it's, not to. What he did was abysmal and um, bad. Three. And it really is bad. And he should not behave that way, especially because of the fact that he's married. Mm-hmm. Right. And he married a little Asian one. Right? Oh, she's Asian. Yeah. Like, she has a thick accent and stuff. Oh, wow. Which I don't find attractive. That's to each his own. You know what I mean? I but, have an accent, dummy. Yep, no, but hers is like, you know. Thick like, jungle? Well, like, remember like... Oh, we go. <laughs> <laughs> remember in Platoon when Kevin Dillon shot that guy in the face and he was hopping up and down with his leg because he shot his leg? That kind of accent. So hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Dad Fanny character kind of accent. Mm. Mm. And he's playing... Uh, <laughs> Tahoe, right? Is he Tahoe this week? Last week? Are we plugging his show? No, it already, did, it already happened. Go so. see that fan. Go is. see that fan right yeah. now, even though he's not there anymore. But yeah, I, 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 what he did was wrong, and I just, I don't know how to defend it. There's no way to defend it. And um, if you, if he were to ask me, are you Mike's friend? I go, yeah, he's all right. But um, you know, I'm, I don't, clo- I don't hang out with him. I'm not close to him. I just know that he's worked really hard as a comedian and. These are some of the consequences of consequences of behaving that way, mm-hmm. but you know, he doesn't deserve to have his whole career flushed on the toilet because of that. I don't think. Yeah, and that's a, that's the problem with with social media. Yeah. You know, it's like you are a criminal before you wake, even before you know it. Like you could be sleeping, and something that you said via text three years ago could be put on blast, taken out of context, and you could be criminalized before you wake up. And start your day, and it that's sucks. the danger of, of of all of this. It's and then people really truly believe what they see immediately. They don't try to um, understand that maybe there's a bigger picture or a bigger story. And Allah you're Michael, Ri- Allah Michael Richards. Well, he he did the hard, <laughs> the N word with a hard R. Uh, yeah, yeah, multiple hard times. R. Pretty pretty hard. Yeah, a lot he, of times. Um, yeah, I mean, but that but see that right there, his decision. To do that at the Laugh Factory. If you guys don't know, I mean, Videos obviously there, Michael Richards yeah. was a, a cast member. He played Kramer on Seinfeld. He was at that Laugh Factory. I think everyone listening probably yeah. knows. Mm-hmm. And he said that he would hang black people upside down and put pitchforks in their butt, which they never used to do back then. So he just made that up. <laughs> he made fake. Like scenario. he acted as if like that was something that we did in America. Pitchforks. Yeah, pitchforks yeah, yeah we never did that. Butts. We hung up, hung them, and that yeah, was that. You know what I mean? Lynched them. Yeah, yeah. Which is wrong and awful, but um. Yeah, but uh, there's, there's, it's hard to. So what he did, but he, what he made the mistake, just I just because I've never really talked about it, mm-hmm. is is that and I'm, 
he made a mistake of even just going up in that specific show. Why? Was it the because urban show? Freaky Monday was the uh, urban show. You're Michael Richards. What the fuck are you performing there for? Pretty white. Yeah. Because I'm pretty. I can. I'm a little bit more relevant to urban rooms. And I'm not. When I say urban, it's not racial. That's just. That's just what they call it. What they call, they call the industry it. Calls the it, industry yeah. calls it urban rooms. So don't write me a fucking letter <laughs> saying you're a racist by calling it. That's what they call it. Yeah. yeah. And um, I've done them. Urban rooms, and I'm 50 50, but they're very difficult to do. And I don't know why he even would choose to do that, but. Um, I did not know that was an urban room he did that in. Holy yeah, he did. Crap. And, and, uh, <laughs> I thought that was just a regular crowd. No, no, no. Because, Holy shit. Yeah. And then also, secondly. Um, Dang. But he still worked. I mean, yeah. I mean he did the Alley. Alley what's that? Christy Alley show. Which one? The Christy. limousine one, or whatever. He was the limo. Uh, the one they offered me. You were you got for the same roles as him. Yeah, what happened was the showrunner of Animal Practice. That's how practice. you know Kramer's career is going down the drain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wow. That's an attack. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. An that's attack. purely an attack on me and my career. But um, that's no holds barred. But anyway, um, yeah. After Animal Practice, the showrunner did that show, Christiella show, and then he goes, "Hey, do you want to do this show?" And I go, "I don't know. I heard these weird things about Christiella. Oh, like yeah. That she's." Diva, I just different weird things, and I just she just seems that way too. So I just said no, but he did that, and um, so he's still kind of. But you know what? Who gives a? F I mean, I'm just saying what he did was wrong, but you made you know his there was there what is there their syndication alone was like 150 million dollars. I mean, they made so, so, much, money. so much fucking so much. money. It's like, but you know what? At, the end at what of, at what amount of money would you have in your bank account to be able? Okay, what amount of money would you feel safe having in your bank account to say the the N word with a hard R out loud in an urban room? One hundred fifty million dollars. <laughs> then you'd say hard R's all day. I don't think I would do it. No, I mean I've said the N word before. We all have. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in what context? I that's, do that, it that's what in matters. Context, yeah. Strictly to get an, a, a laugh. To Eric Griffin's face. <laughs> to Eric Griffin. A well, lot. but also Eric friend, call, yeah. Eric Griffin's called me a pan face gook. Like it's just mm -hmm. a part of. How we talk to each other, but just him, yeah. It's it's no. I mean, I've done it too. I do really gay shit in front of Ian Edwards, not because he's black, because he doesn't like it. Yeah, <laughs> but I do it for funsies. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything. I have never done anything in life out of a mean spirit. Yeah, I do it out of love. You know what I mean? And Comedy, happiness. Yeah. And um, th here's another thing I want to talk about: love and happiness. Is that Charlie? Oh, so I was at. Um, the Phoenix, uh, mm -hmm. Phoenix doing a sh couple of shows. My parents were there. Nice. And um, my dad is sick. He was in the hospital. He's better now. And um, but Charlie was um, <laughs> what? Charlie was in my hotel room, and we we're w looking up stuff online. And I I go to this. I don't know why. And this is I feel so <laughs> bad about it. But I go to different cities talent agencies. Like you go to their websites? No. Yeah. There's a place. There's this thing called because back when I was on Mad TV. The producers were like, you got to check out this website. It's called Philly Faces. Yeah. And it's just a s agency out of Philly. You know oh, what I mean? I and see. so then you see these, they have an, a roster of actors. All you the headshots. No, you see the reels. Oh, I see. And so there's another one out of Cleveland called Taxi Management. <laughs> and oh, I wait, that's a talent agency? Yeah. Taxi I Management. I swear to fucking God. There is some talent on there that is <laughs> so look it unbelievably now. funny. I can't even. And I, we, Charlie, we, how hard were we laughing? Like conniption. It like was, I almost died. It was one of those laughs where y you didn't hear them laugh for two minutes because they were. It was we couldn't just, breathe. They couldn't breathe. Like but, we were collapsed on the ground because there was a sequence of videos that I have to show you in order to get you to that point of laughter. <laughs> Because there's a callback yeah. and this and that. Yeah. A lot of white guys. There's a there's a girl on there. Her entire. No, I know reel. we should not let. Uh, before, okay, I want We're you gonna to blow up their whole. No, 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 no. I want you to say, say uh, your thing. But before I you say that, all right. I just want to say that we're not making fun of these people. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, no, it's their no, dream. No. They're, uh, it is their dream. But can I just say something? Because I've had experience with this. Yeah. There are certain management companies that actually take money from these unsuspecting people who think that they're gonna make it, 
and then they pay money and they say, yeah, we're going to represent you. They do this a lot in modeling because I remember even even here in Happened L.A. Yeah. yeah, they'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll recruit you and we're a management. You know, we, we seek out talent and then you pay this amount and then we're going to rep represent you. So this, I think, is one of those places. That's why I mentioned this. Yeah. So this girl's entire reel is of her assembling a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> And it, it doesn't even zoom into her face. It's just her head is cut off and it's just her body. She auditioning for a lot of QVC? Like, what is yeah, and I think it's like her audition for QVC. And it's 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 really sad and funny at yeah, the same yeah. time. I mean, there's a couple that do have talent. I'm not being li I'm, I'm being real. Yeah. There was a one older guy that like his monologues were pretty good and, and whatnot. But what I want to say to these people is, is that you you have a dream. I want you to have a dream. I want you to pursue your dream, all right? But don't take shortcuts, mm -hmm. all right? Doing it there and not moving to either New York or LA is a shortcut. Small market, yeah. It's a small market. What you do is you go into a big pond with big fish, right? And you compete. And if you have the talent, you will rise. Yeah. I promise you. But some of these people, and like I was in Portland at the mall, and there was a gigantic talent show that people paid money. Those are bullshit. To do, I know with the Scams. Um, with yeah, with the it was runway, a scam. Yes. runway, right? Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But so the funny thing is, is that they introduced these judges. <laughs> this judge is from uh, Akron, Ohio, and he's, you know, what I mean, yeah. an agent out of this thing. And then they all kind of stood up, and you knew that they weren't. They're not. Yeah. These yeah. people, this right? This is Tina from Auntie Anne's. But yeah. what I did, exactly. like, what I did was because a couple of the contestants recognized me. So I stood there staring at the judges and like the host to like to just go, I know what you're doing. You're scamming all these people. Yeah, these this is a highway robbery. And anyone that pays money to do that is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, no, they just don't know. They, yet, if you do, I was telling to Charlie this. They trick a lot of these. Yeah, parents, I was telling parents, Charlie. Parents, parents, parents. When I started doing stand up in 1995, the first thing that entered my mind is this. This is going to be a long road. You just, I just, you just know. You just know that I'm going to go up 10,000 times for years and I may or may not make it. But I know that that is the road. That is what I need to do to get to where I need to go. Because I don't, I don't come from show business background. Mm -hmm. My parents are working class. They own clothing stores, Restaurant, yeah. right? They barely speak English, all right? I don't have that connection. So I had to come to LA with nothing, knowing nobody, and crawl my way up. And I think I think I, think I did pretty good. I crawled at CAA. I have great rep. You know what I mean? I've been on shows, yeah. movies, whatever, right? But it's like, if you don't know that that's what it takes, then you're not going to make it. Am I not right? Lunji, yeah. right? Is that... I mean, Charlie Finn, you know, he's been on two TV shows. You know, he's been our guest and one of my best buddies. And uh, he knows how difficult. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. by, you're, you just came here and you realize what it takes. So anyway, anyone that I mean, like. Given, given that everything is available on the Internet now, you should at the very least educate yeah. yourself about what the process Industry, is yeah. about. Like what it actually takes. Because back then, and I mean, all of these um, videos that we were looking at, this um, quote-unquote management. Bad. It, it looked like a bad infomercial from the 90s. It looked like something that was put out in the 90s of like, and they were just scamming people who were so unaware from these really small towns. Yeah. But it's like... It's a small market. I mean, nine-year-olds can operate Reddit, you know, better than me. Yeah. They can, you know, it's... And another thing is when people come up to me and go, how do I get an agent That's or a manager? how it works, but... No, this is how you do it. <laughs> they come to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. I've never I, only one in the first two years did I do headshots. Mm -hmm. After that, I said fuck this because nobody wanted them. They came to you one day. Matt called me and said, "I can't get you at Gersh because that's where my agent was at the mm -hmm. time." He goes, "I just became an agent, but I'm going to look out for things for you," and that's how it started. Yeah, but it's like. And that guy, the reason why Matt even knew who I was was because he'd see me go up a hundred times. Mm -hmm. You know I mean at the uh, comedy store? So that's I'm just saying that that's if you if you wanted to ask 
and you're listening, I want to become an actor or a comedian, that's fine. Do the work. That's all. Educate yourself. Is it wrong to even play this right now? On the because some of them are so good. Well, they know the thing; they can look it up now. Yeah, they can look it up. Their website's gonna crash. They're gonna get so much traffic. <laughs> 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 Our bandwidth. Everyone's watching these reels. I Wait. mean, these reels are so good. <laughs> I mean, some of the reels are like DP, you don't even DP know good. No, you don't even know who that person was that you're even looking for. That's how little they're in it. We're gonna watch it after this. I, I gotta yeah, see. It's it gonna now. be great. Yeah, but anyway, that's I just feel like uh, is that mean for me to do? No, but I just no. I just laughed at it and I just let's, let's talk about um our our trip to Arizona. What is it? What do you want to talk about? I mean, a lot of things happened in Arizona. On the way there, what happened? Oh my god! Well, so we leave here starters, at midnight. <laughs> for starters, oh wait, who are you on me? I can start. Wait, oh, so now you're gonna talk? Okay, I'm just gonna uh, before we get into it. I'm gonna say something really nice first. I'm gonna, I want to say this before you say that. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Is that you want to be real about it? I want to be real about it, but I also want to say something positive and nice. Okay. Which is at the end of this Stop. ordeal that we had, Bobby and I hit a milestone in our relationship, and he gave me flowers for the very first time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dead ones, but still hey, flowers. No, they're flowers. It's a they, thought. they were all dead. <laughs> hey. The, the I'm one, like, you couldn't the one, find deader bitch, flowers the than the ones this. that I got you were the freshest ones. Believe me. Really? Oh, because for thirty minutes, I was fucking rifling through this fucking garden. You, you know said I mean? you broke into a garden? No, I went to this place where I was next to, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, florist. A oh, florist. Yeah. It was so hot there, so, so the transport hot. of holding flowers Died. in that hundred and four heat. They yeah. just Woo! fucking. They don't survive out there. Okay, no. go ahead. So we leave. We drive to Phoenix. <laughs> we leave at midnight. Ooh. And I have press. At 7.45. So you mm -hmm. don't sleep. Okay, so I have one. Okay, so I have one press, which is the most important radio show. And they are so busy that they, they only can allot, allot a certain. They're so tightly scheduled. Mm -hmm. So it's like we go from 8.10 to 8.30. And if he's not there, you don't do press. Done. So let's start. We leave. Uh, You're already sounding defensive. I'm not being defensive. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> 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 I'm not You're like <laughs> prefacing this whole story with. I just want to throw that and then go ahead tell the story. <laughs> that was your little thing before the story. No, there, there's not much to the story. We're hyping it up as if there's so much. But yeah. basically, we leave at twelve, and I made, <laughs> I made the worst mistake. I have my my cardiac episodes always happen in my sleep. Always, ninety nine percent huh. of them happen in my sleep, and I told myself. During this drive, don't fall asleep, Kalila, because you don't want to risk getting an episode in the middle of a desert. Oh, God. But we were listening to an audiobook, and I drifted off to sleep. And sure enough, around 4 a.m., we were about two hours away from Phoenix. I wake up unable to breathe. My heart rate is over 200. I'm completely diaphoretic. I'm sweating. I'm shaking. I shake a lot when I have these episodes. And when it happens, it's terrifying. It really, to me, because I just wake up and I'm like, <gasps> it's I, like, I, I oh my. and we're now, now oh though, we're in the God. middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. So she wakes up, we're in the middle of the desert. You react. And I'm like, we got to find a hospital. But we're in the fucking desert. Oh my God. There's okay. a long stretch of nothing right before you enter Phoenix. Maybe a good two and a half hours out. Uh, maybe, so I, I, Bobby goes into Google. He searches for hospitals. We find one in, yeah, in the middle of like Blythe, Arizona, Blythe. and it only had California, like 10, 10 beds in their emergency room. Yeah, oh. small ass operation. So he's trying to speed through we the speed dark. Through, we get there, and I'll be honest with you, and this could sound a little okay, <laughs> okay, <preface> racist, this. <laughs> but it's not. Mm -hmm. Just listen. Mm. I was a little freaked out because it looked country. That's fuck. That's fuck. I see what you're saying. Tumbleweeds. Okay. You know, it's like, wow, we're in Deadwood. You know? We go into the emergency room. I go out to the car. They bring her in. And then I come in. She's on the bed. She has, like, little wires attached. What do they call them? Yeah, leads. Leads out across to her body. And th the head nurse was Asian. Good. Half Asian. It's Half good. Asian. It, and and it, all of a sudden, he felt better. Just so much relief. <laughs> He took a deep breath. As soon no, as it he really, saw. it really does. Really? If it was white people, I would be freaked. Or other colors, 
But um, when I see, when I'm in a hospital and I see an Asian, I just go, finally, real professional help. Oh my god! <laughs> and you know what? It's it's like it's like this, and it, this is gonna sound fucked up. It's comforting, but it's not. It's not. I feel not as comforted as if I'm sitting in an airplane mm -hmm. and I realize the pilot's black. Because I don't know why. Really? When I ever see a black or a Mexican pilot, I go, oh, fuck. So it has to be so white. I, when, I, when we take off, I hold on to the things a little bit. You know, more. we're going to talk about this in a little while, and I'll tell you why that is, is that a race? really, really stupid feeling you have. So you like a white guy. Let's finish the story black. first, and we'll go back to the pilot just certain, later. Just listen. There's just certain jobs okay. where if I see a certain race... Then I'm feel just a little bit more easier. Right. That's I'm all. gonna do a study. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna say an you out. I'm gonna say an occupation. You say a race. Okay, well, let's, tell, let's finish the story okay, okay, first, yeah, okay. and then we'll play your stupid game. I'm gonna just okay. call you out real quick before we continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it, Kalila. I'm in you trouble. You are the only Asian that I know in existence who has a black accountant. <laughs> so you're actually not as racist as you think, my friend. I'm not racist. I know, but what I'm saying is, if you saw you saying you you, you get scared of a black guy, can I just pilot, say this though? But you're not afraid of a black guy my, with your money. My so accountant is black. Mm -hmm. Clinton and I fucking love him and I trust him with every fucking penny that I ever earned I really do mm -hmm. he's family to me and he's this old black guy who lives in Marina Del Rey and I trust him with my life but it took me two years to sign with him <laughs> because my manager goes I know a guy named Clinton you need an accountant mm -hmm. I met with him I just called her I go I don't know See, what do you mean? He's the best. He does Stevie Wonder's manager, all this stuff. Oh, Ben sold. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah. So I went and chopped around a little bit more. And then two years later, I met with him again. Mm -hmm. And then I signed. That, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. It's so great. we're on Blythe. Great side Asi track. Yeah. <laughs> Asian, Asian lady in the. In <laughs> you, you could have gone without telling that story. <laughs> all right. So Asian lady. <laughs> all right. Asian I don't lady. care. I say I'm not editing. Yeah. All right. Fuck the edits. We're good. Fuck the edits. A so, so Asian. Asian lady, she does it. So at this point, I make a decision. I have, I, I can either, I'm scared of not having, having the help that I need if my symptoms worsen, right? So if I'm going into full SVT, if I'm going whatever, whatever, I'm afraid that in Blythe, they don't have proper what it needs to convert me to convert meaning they give me um adenosine my heart rate it's yeah, yeah. the jump start my heart whatever so i tell bobby <laughs> i'm gonna ask for an ekg we're already running late we've been there in the hospital he remember he has to be at press at seven seven yeah right so it's four o'clock we're Damn. still we're about two and a half hours three <laughs> three hours away from yeah Arizona. we're cutting close yeah so i told him i feel like shit still but just give me my ekg i can read my ekg and I can gauge whether or not oh I'm God. safe. I can we can oh drive for God. two and a half hours That's to terrifying. Arizona. That's terrifying. You're self-diagnosing. Yeah, she goes do because they were gonna do blood work. They were gonna do all of that. I was like, no, don't do any of that. Jeez. I just give me my EKG. Got my EKG. Definitely abnormal. Um, for anybody out there who cares, it's um, it was abnormal. It's an abnormal yeah. EKG. Then I think to myself, fuck, I can't. Bobby cannot be late to press. I don't feel well, but fuck it, let's brave it. God, I feel bad, so bad about this. So I brave it. I'm not feeling good. I was like, Bobby, just pedal to the metal. Let's just two and a half hours fly to Phoenix. At the very least, if I get worse, they have bigger hospitals there. In they Phoenix. can take care of me, right? So we get to Phoenix. I can't believe Finally, that was your thought process for all this. Holy shit. I always put him first. first. When wow. I got out of surgery a month ago, and that person was trying to extort uh, him. I feel so bad. I always put him first because that's just my natural instinct. Not because I... You I like that, yeah. But that's just, you know. Yeah, that's you, yeah. I'm weak. You're not weak. <laughs> I just, don't know anything. No, I'm but a weak you, person. I understand that there's money to be made. He needs to do press. He needs to sell tickets. Mm. So obviously, I take that into consideration. If I get sicker, the hospital bills need to get paid. And Papa's going to pay it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I know that for me to stay healthy and for all my, my needs to get met too, he needs to make press. So tickets get sold, so Bobby makes money. Yeah. Like I still have to think of that whole process. So that drive to Phoenix, were you like guys freaking out? Like oh not shit, not really, man. not really. No, I started to feel a little bit better, thank God. Oh, I still good. felt a little nauseous. I still felt like you know nervous. Mm -hmm. Um, so we finally get to Phoenix, but about outside, twenty minutes outside of Phoenix, we hit really, really, really bad traffic. There were three accidents. Oh my God! On the ten, one after another, one it was after crazy. the other. Worst luck. Yeah. And at this point, my bladder, because uh, when I get episodes, I have to drink a lot of water. 
So I I drank all this coconut water, tons of water, mm-hmm. and my bladder was so full. And I told Bobby, he lo- I said, I have to pee. Like, I cannot hold it anymore. I'm going to pee in the car. And he goes, but we're going to be late to press. So I said, fuck it, okay. I get a cup. I go into the back seat, and I start she peeing. Pees into a coffee cup. Like, I'm doing everything I can to get him to press. Wow. Everything I possibly can. And I'm nauseous. I'm like, you sweetie, like, I think I'm going to vomit because that's what happens when my episodes yeah, happen. God. We finally get to our Close right around to, to the hotel. To Someone hotel. cuts him off. I'm still in the back seat because I just peed. Yeah, oh and, and right? because <laughs> because she just had a breast operation. Yeah, I just had a uh, my. She's breast in the back seat now. Removed. Her breast hits my car. He slams on the brakes. I mean, my the back of my chair. My See. left <sighs> breast completely collides with the back of his seat, uh. and my now my left boob is completely bruised. Yeah, she's screaming. Right, I'm screaming. I'm nauseous. I, I my bladder is still full. Because I couldn't feel the I whole I disregarded cup. her breast. And I was basically going, where the fuck's the hotel? <laughs> and because I was crying. She's crying. In the yeah, back. You both are just at level 10 right now. And yeah, also, we 10. haven't level slept, 10. mind you. So you guys are just. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. And so so that, we get to the hotel finally. I didn't even bother. I just went straight well, to the bathroom. Well, no, what, this is what happened. When I, we pull up to the hotel, my guy is there mm-hmm. to pick me up to go to press. And he tells me, we got to go. Because we're late. We had to get there by 8.10. Okay? And it's now 8. Almost. Tight. No, so, 7.50. I was, just, I, was, I was watching the clock. Okay. Right. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, I like how more dramatic it was, though. So then I, we put our stuff into the lobby of the hotel. and I, I go sit. straight for the bathroom. I peed and then I vomited because I was nauseous. Oh. I had a bruised tit. Everything was just a fucking mess, yeah. right? I come back down to the lobby to to find Bobby already gone, mm-hmm. and I was livid. He dumped. He dumped his. He just left all his luggage there. Didn't check in. Didn't do anything. He went straight to press, and he couldn't. My the reason I was upset was he couldn't wait one minute for me to finish peeing and vomiting <laughs> before yeah. saying, "Hey, bye, babe. Uh, check in. Here's the stuff. I'm gonna go." Yeah, well, and that's why that's why I got. And that's flowers. why I got her flowers. Ah, the vibes for the flowers came yeah. in. First time in my life, I got. Did flowers. you smile? You know, I actually cried. I was so touched. <laughs> it's so wow. easy to make me happy. <laughs> like there's, I was, I when he left and I was in the hotel room and I checked in, I was crying. I was reassessing my relationship. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? How much more do I have to do? You know. I was kidding the, about the black pilot thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> new one. <laughs> I really was. I was kidding about I that. I was trying to make a joke about it. You it came out wrong. I know, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I've been thinking about that the whole time since I said it. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say that I don't, you know, in fact, I don't want to ever want to talk about race really any, again. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, let's be that. Let that be But the before last. we do that, let's play the game. All right. <laughs> I'm going to need you to say a race for what I say in occupation. All right. No, what do you mean? So if I go carpenter, first race. Oh, I, see. I, love, I love this game. <laughs> this so is popular ahead. game, we just, made, we just made it up, but go ahead. Uh, carpenter. White. Hmm. All right. Accountant. Black. Interesting. Good. Uh, college professor in philosophy. White. Okay. Farmer. White. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Strawberry picker. <laughs> so <specific>. Mexican. <laughs> okay. Farmer. <laughs> uh, They're not the same thing. Uh, it's like s- slave owner, slave, the same thing. It's not the same. <laughs> uh, but seriously, pilot. Ah, uh, white. Okay, I feel so bad about it. Uh, fr- Mathematician. Do, um, black actually. Interesting. Near, <laughs> because they're really good. The what you ones. know, you yeah okay. The black yeah, ones are really good. Neurosurgeon. White. Neurosurgeon. White. Okay. God, no Asians for doctors. Interesting. A nurse. Asian. Specific Asian. Filipino. And yeah. Korean. You have a and lot Korean. of Korean nurses now. This game is not fun. It's no, not fun. It's, it's not stupid. Fun. Yeah. Because it's, you know what it is? is Because you're saying pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it by the book. And, and I wasn't trying to get laughs because I don't want to be racist. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good um, test. that's the reason why the game didn't work. You know what I mean? If we wanted to play it for the other, laughs. With other comics, it's it, going to be it, 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 would, it would be amazing. be way different. But I don't want to do it because... You know, in order to make um, to get laughs, I feel like I have to get a little racial. Mm-hmm. And I'm done with it. I think. There I mean, go, now, now listen. If you're a Tiger Belly fan and you like the racism, it will happen again. It will. <laughs> you know what I mean? for, for for this episode, no, no more. Done. 
done with that shit. Okay. I want to go back to pilots for a second, because on the way to <laughs> Arizona, done with that okay, shit. Yeah. Can we go back? Pilots. No, there is something to this because Bobby and I listened to the audio book Outliers by um, what's his name, Malcolm. Malcolm McDonald. Uh, Don't say Malcolm something. X. What's it? Yeah. Gladwell. Oh, Malcolm Gladwell. And I want to yes. say before she even says anything that <laughs> fucking amazing. Enlightening book. Very, very great book. But why his, Written by a black guy, by the way. Oh. Why I feel like your your instincts are a little wrong with the whole pilot thing yeah. is because Korean Air actually had the worst safety rating for a very, very long time in the nineties. And they they um Cultural. Yeah, it, it, and they kind of, um, they say that the reason is because there's different cultures with different, um, it's called PDI, which is power distance index. And in some cultures, th- insubordination is a really, really big issue. Whereas others in, Amer- in other cultures like America, we're able to speak up even to our superiors and then mm-hmm. tell them what we really think, right? Yeah. So these... Um, Korean Air had a lot of um, plane crashes in the 90s because um, no one could tell the captain or no one could explicitly tell the captain what you're doing is wrong. In a state of emergency, pr- yes. in a state of an emergency, you need everyone in the cockpit right. Right, working as a team mm-hmm. right, and doing a variety of things. No one should be the leader, right? Their whole objective is to land safely. Right. But in Korea Air's case... No, none. Anybody underneath him, like I don't know, the what captain, the, the, ca- the, the, the first, pilot, officer, the first or, officer, or can you know, say anything, ca- or the radar guy. I don't know. There's a word for that. There's a, it's a flight engineer. So there's always the captain, the first officer, and then the flight engineer, yeah. right? Yeah. So apparently, like they used this one example of a plane crash by um, in, a Korean airplane crash in Guam, and they listened to the audio of it. And the first officer and the flight engineer knew exactly what was wrong and what the pilot was doing wrong, but they never explicitly told him. They hinted at it nicely yeah. because that's wow. just culturally, culturally you're not yeah. allowed. It's it's insubordination. The first, the first officer said because the um cr- the captain was gonna air uh, um land by sight, mm-hmm. and the first officer in his head is like, it's raining really hard and we can't see anything, so I'm just. I'm just gonna say something, and he goes, "It's raining pretty hard, huh?" Oh my! He's hinting, hinting, at hinting at it, hinting at it, and he's like, "Yeah, I guess." And then yeah. that was it. He never said anything else. Oh my! But what God. the first officer was supposed to say is, "I think that it's raining really hard. We can't land this way." Right. Right. And this is where you know, what I mean, this is a dire situation. It's like super so certain Asian countries, culturally. then they call this. A, a and, and the pedi- captain's backhand. There was an incident where a captain backhanded a first officer in the face. Yeah. What? Not even saying it, not in that specific yeah, but, situation, but they f- physically assault people. Yeah, wow. so they're saying, like, for instance, in the Korean culture, it the first officer and the flight engineer likely bowed to this pilot even before they went on the flight. So there's a lot of like, a, there's respect. you know, that's a that's a culture of honor and ranking, right, mm-hmm. and respect and all of those things. So you have countries like, I th- Brazil and Korea rank highest in the in the um power distance index Mm. and that means that ranking and honor and respect is a very very big deal versus american and i guess in our in our americanness we end up being safer pilots because we we are able Mm. to speak out so what korean air did to rectify their mistake is they had to eliminate that whole culture system and get with a universal you know um way of equal you know. Yeah. So they, they, they made every Korean pilot, number one, speak English. Yeah. If you don't speak English, you're not flying our flights. Because wow. that's right? a flight language. It's a flight language, mm-hmm. right? And another thing was they gave an example of like a Colombian flight, correct? Yeah. Uh, Columbia in New is, York. Yeah. So Colombia also ranks high in the power distance index. Yeah. And they, and they were intimidated by who are the, um, the, the, the traffic, traffic control, controller. ATC, air traffic controller. The New York traffic controllers are like, because they're American, and they speak to other American uh, captains with no like hierarchy. Like, mm-hmm. dude, are you going to do it or not? You know what I mean? They're they, very intimidating. They tell you exactly what to do. Right? Because they don't, we don't have that as Americans. Like, I can go up to Donald Trump and go, go fuck yourself. That would never and it's happen fine. in Korea, though. Yeah, in Korea, you can't do it. Yeah. No. You'll get, you'll get in trouble. And but, it's the same reason why even that Korean ferry incident with all those kids 
um, it w- they were told to stay inside right. as the ship was sinking. Yeah, they they, they and captain they over the thing said, stay in your thing, and then they drowned when they knew that they were going to die. They just, but they just stayed in there anyway because, because they, they were told by another Korean adult to stay in their little oh cabin, God. right? Yeah. So they just drowned, but that captain of that ship, abandoned ship, mm-hmm. the Korean ferry captain, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's in prison for life. Yes, he should be. He should be, Jesus. yeah. But um, you know what? The thing is, is that, and it's my culture because I'm the only Korean in the room. And I just want to say out loud right now that there is no captain in this fucking room. We're all in the same boat and we're all have the same power structure. All right? It doesn't so, seem like it. I know it doesn't seem like you it. You make Gilbert and I. I know it doesn't seem like you, it. It's the way us, I talk. Well, no, you force us to bow. Every you have time to bow. You. You, you have to bow. I'm so tired of bowing. You have to I bow. Here. Right? And you have to call me sir. Do we meet? Well, the cameras ha- not on. Do we right? have to eat rice still out of a little dog? Yes. Tree? I don't. I'm tired of bending but over. But when to you're eat. eating the rice, just remember that we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we are the same. I mean, we're all unique. We're snowflakes, and yet we're the same. We're snow. All right. <laughs> so I want everyone in this room to know that. You right. Too, we're George. all on the same playing field, even though I make more money than all of you combined. <laughs> Yeah, we're all the same. We cannot override the captain's orders, guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. My I'll God. backhand you. <laughs> we're all gonna die in the ship. <laughs> I'm first captain. Yeah, you're yeah. your flight engineer. We're fucked. Yeah, we're fucked. We're oh dead. We God. can't tell him anything. We can't tell him. Anything. We can't even tell him, Bobby. Don't be racist. Bobby, don't be sexist. We'll get backhanded. Also, in the outliers, they talked about why Asians are good at math. What was their reason? Rice culture. Rice culture. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by what do you mean? Just read the book. We're not <laughs> yeah. gonna. We're not gonna. No, get no. Now. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Like, I'll tell you why. They eat rice because I'm not really good at like, but I can just. I I know the gist of it. It's basically in when you're harvesting rice, mm-hmm. it takes a coordinated effort, and it also takes like American farmers. They have machines, right? Oh, I see. And there's certain parts of the year where they don't work, right? And so it's like it's they don't work as hard. You have to to cultivate rice. Work 12 hours a day. And it has to be specific, like the water has to be a certain level, right? Mm-hmm. Or it ruins it, right? It, it p- positionally, right? So they need, you know what I mean, a coordinated effort. So they work constantly 12 months out of the year. So they always um, wake up before dawn, before the sun um, rises. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, ha- they have to look ahead and make sure that they're harvesting enough to last them, to last their grains the winter. Or the tougher seasons, which which is not rice, wet rice season, and so basically they're saying that Asians have a lot of um, patience, persistence, and um, and they work. Yeah, and the the and so basically when it comes to a math problem, it's not that other like let's say let's use an American kid for example. It's not that the American kid is has a lower IQ or is less intelligent. The Asian kid just has more patience and will work on a problem for five minutes until before asking for help mm. versus the american kid who will look at it for 10 seconds and be like i don't understand this i'm gonna go get some help so um, that's how they explain it's it in essentially outliers. work ethic like a lot of people think that asians are just smart and it's not true it's not true because i'm dumb yeah i'm stupid too. and i you know i and i wish i grew up in a, a rice culture <laughs> but but by by coming here, it's never too late, baby. What my parents did though was they came, they had me here, and you know, because a lot of like, you know, what is so funny because a lot of these immigrants they come here for their children, yeah, and they want their children to have culture, education, have a variety of friends, and just have a big life, you know. And but what what they don't realize is that if you're gonna have your kid here in America, your kid, it, it you're rolling the dice. Because 18 years later, it could have tattoos on his face. It you know I mean? could it, have it, tattoos. You know what I mean? yeah. With a skateboard, you know what I mean? Shaved head, no shirt walking around, and it's your daughter. Her titties <laughs> just hanging out, right? And, you know what I mean? And you're like, what happened? I'm a lesbian. You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, I had him here. You know what I mean? Mm. America just fucks people up in many ways. Mm. No? Yeah. I'm wrong? No. Am I wrong? Yeah, because I think about what my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're. I think yeah, you're wrong. wrong. I think you're wrong. I think about what my life would have been if I stayed in the Philippines, continued staying in a very tight knit community with an international school with a great like, 
you know, IB program. All my friends in the Philippines are are successful. They're they're they hold high power positions, right? Yeah. Every single one of them. Yeah. Except for me. Yeah, because I, you came here. But I don't feel I don't there are things about myself that I truly am proud of that I feel as though I would have never gained if I continued to live in a very safe, tight-knit, perfect community as the international school mm. that I went to in the Philippines. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. And I was able to see a different... I was, I, I was poor when I got here, which was a very stark difference from my life in the Philippines. I lived in the hood. I, my, my school was half black, half Mexican. I, was, I, I got street savvy. And all those things I'm proud of. When oh. she said she grew up in the hood, right, why, you know, why did you smirk? Because I look, you looked at me right away. No, why did you smirk? Because you're going to talk about Glendale. Pasadena. No. Or Pasadena. The I hood lived, in Pasadena. I lived on Summit <laughs> Avenue. If anybody, if you were in LA, drive smirk? by Summit and Mountain yeah. and tell me if you think that's a great area. I've never been it's there. It's very dangerous. Between the yogurt store and the diesel uh, jean j have store. You, have you taken him Very there? dangerous. Has he seen He's it? He's never seen it. I think we all got to go. Yeah. Yeah, he, and a, stand he, outside for five minutes and see how you feel. But if my parents never had, if they had me in Korea and we stayed in Korea, I feel like I would have had just a, an abysmal normal life of just working in an office or a factory. or I don't know. You know, it's like I believe that. I'm the way I am because I am an American and I was able to just do, do whatever. whatever I wanted to do. And I'm extremely blessed that they had me here because the the alternative, I can't, it's unthinkable to me. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine you in an office. <laughs> or just in some sort of like, I have to carry rice bags to one point to another and I tell some joke. You know what I mean? Because it'd still <laughs> be kind of funny, I think. And then have them go, don't, no joking. And I'm like, oh, sorry, you know? Yeah. I think it would have been an awful lot. I mean, they do have comics there, I guess, and yeah. actors, but I look the way I do, too, which makes it... Like, Ken Jeong is talented, you know what I mean? But he's a fucked-up-looking guy. Yeah, he looks really He great. does? He is? You haven't seen him in real life. He's got no. skinny <laughs> you arms. You haven't seen him in real I've life. I've seen him. I've <laughs> analyzed his hands, his feet, his <laughs> neck, everything. He looks so normal to me. On no. TV, he looks like just a standard Asian he's guy. He's not. But you know what? I also, he's, yeah. yeah, he's very just kind of like... My standard for normal is also a little skewed. Yeah, I think me he's too. Normal. I'm not normal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucked up looking, yeah. you know? Um, we were at the hospital to visit um, Bobby's dad. And um, his mom was changing the dad's G-tube, which was in his stomach. Mm -hmm. So she had to lift his um, hospital gown up. Okay. And um, what were your observations about your dad, baby? If you're going to say that my dad has a bigger dick than me right now. You right? said that. <laughs> I cannot even fucking believe that you would bring up my dad's sick and that you're saying that my dad has a bigger no, dick than me. No, I didn't. You said that. <laughs> He, my dad. He does. <laughs> he definitely does. But what I'm saying is, you said it first, and I just agreed. Oh wow, this is. Good. You said, dad, like mom, like dad is a bigger dick than me, and you kept looking at it, and so I, I obviously it was right in front of my face. I looked, and yes, he does by a lot. <laughs> Jesus, Kalila, easy man. What the fuck? Easy. Relax, lady. It's so much bigger than his dick. <laughs> she keeps repeating All it. All right. But I wasn't like trying to perv out. I'm just like making, you know, I just agreed He's with him. He's got a bigger dick than me. All right. And it's not, his shaft is not as hairy as yours. <laughs> well, he's so oh, baby, if you stop talking about my dick. <laughs> There's dad's dick. No, uh, no, or my dad's dick. You uh, <laughs> Let I, me say this though. Can I just say this? In my family, I'm second because my brother's dick is smaller than mine. There you go. So Stevie's like. He's bronze. I'm not saying you have a small dick. I'm just saying your dad's is bigger. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I never said you had a small dick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my dad has a bigger dick. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Next time my dad is um undressing or whatever, don't look at my dad's dick. Um, I actually yeah, threw it away. <laughs> I... Can you not look at my? If your mom was sick and she was pulling up a block, I would not look at your mom's vag. Interesting. I go, wow, your your mom's vag is tighter than your vag. <laughs> From Imagine if I said it. that. Your mom's vag is pinker and tighter Number like a little one, baby's fucking vagina. Number one, I didn't say it. I merely agreed with you. Yeah. You said it first and I just nodded and said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. That's all I said. Yeah. Oh, man. Jesus, but, um, baby. gets so angry. I'm not angry. My dad has a bigger dick and he's <laughs> sick and that's that. He's got bruises all over his body. It's like really hard. 
to see him that way. You know, it really is difficult to see it was, somebody that you were so frightened of growing up. You know, he was a guy that we just feared, mm-hmm. you know, and he is a shell of a man. He's old. Um, he's extremely emotional. Like, because when you went down with my mom, I was just me and my dad in my hotel, in the hotel room, in the room, and my dad started crying. He just cries. Oh, man. You know what I mean? I love you so much. You know what I mean? And it's like, and I, you know, and it's really just really sad, you know, and it, it's an unav- unavoidable part of life. And when you're in it, it's like, I don't know. I mean, it's not sad, I guess. It's, you, you, you just think to yourself, wow, this is a part of life. But I just never knew, I, you ne- as a kid, you never think that you're ever going to be in this position mm-hmm. to take care of your folks, you know, but here we are. They always seem invincible. Your parents will always seem like they, they cannot mm-hmm. get sick. They can't falter, that they'll always be just these strong pillars in your life but that's just not the case um i wanted to point out something that really frustrated me in the hospital and you know we talked about this is you know his parents don't uh his mom speaks english perfectly to me she she speaks perfect english but you know there is an accent barrier there so obviously when when people are talking to her in english too fast she's not going to understand it his dad isn't able to articulate sentences very well but it's the way you were, they were treated by the doctor and the they first didn't nurse. Bring my, they, they didn't bring my dad breakfast. breakfast right? Yeah, and he has like sh- blood sugar issues. Yeah, like, and my mom goes, they don't respond to, the doctors come in, they don't say hi, they don't right. talk. And you know what I mean? And they treat my parents, what, if I, my brother and I aren't there, when my brother's there, they get shit done. Because oh. my brother looks like he's going to kill them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So when I walked in with Kalila, my mom's complained like they don't, they're treating us like immigrants, mm-hmm. right? So then Kyla, Kalei, like presses the button. The nurse comes in. And she looked like she was scared because she sees both of us. You know what I mean? And then I try to, and this is going to sound really gross, but this is what I try to do always is I'll do a little walk around just so that anyone recognizes me. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that it works. Yeah. yeah. I think I really do. If Let, let me say something right now. If you were a nurse, yeah. right, and there was this old white man, right, yeah. complaining, my, my pelvis. <laughs> or whatever. My pelvis is burning. My pelvis. And you're like, I don't want to fucking help this yeah. white man's pelvis. So you don't go in there. Yeah. Right? But then like Di- you realize it's Leo DiCaprio comes in. It's his and dad. that's his dad. Would you be more attentive? Oh, of course. Then Would you a, really? Yeah. Then you're a fucked up nurse. Because you should no, treat no, 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 you, no, no, no. No. You're not a fucked up nurse. I, I think that's the way the world works. So that's that. I don't see it that way. I would treat anybody, and as should every nurse who ever takes. If you're in healthcare, that oath, you should just no, you, be good. <laughs> you should treat everybody as if they were your earlier. own family member. No, I thought you were saying in general, would someone else? No, I said you. And that's don't go back to what to fix it. You're a bad person. I accept. Okay. And that's the one thing too. It's like they. <laughs> my my biggest. <laughs> What's says, wrong with me? The captain's the like, captain's oh, you guys, I'm back again. <laughs> we're all, we're all equal, guys. Yeah. The right. guy that walks around the hospital, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, no, shut the fuck up. I love you guys, man. And we're like, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 It's uh, the doctors came in. Didn't his mom didn't understand a thing they said. We weren't there yet. They don't even look her in the eye. Five minutes of just throwing out medical jargon, and his mom's just like, I think we're going home today. So I get there, I call the nurse, and I'm like, look, I'm going to need a very explicit plan of what to expect here because his parents think they're going home today. So give me his, and I ask for the labs, I ask for everything. And the the nurse goes, oh, no, he's going to be here three to four days. Yeah, she didn't it's, know. And it's such, that is a very, very big break in communication. If his parents think that they're going home that day, and the lady's like, no way, he's go- he's not going anywhere. In the meantime, his mom doesn't have a bed to sleep in. You know, she would have at least like it's it's as simple as that. It's just like basic fucking common sense. But when when nurse some not all nurse, there's some great nurses out there. But some people, they see Asian families. They automatically assume they're the types who won't press the call light. They won't they won't burden you with much, but they exploit the fact that there's a language barrier. So they don't treat that patient as well as they would somebody who constantly asks for help. So I told his mom, look. I know that you don't want to burden anyone, but that's their job. You press this light for whatever you need. They don't. They get to serve you breakfast, lunch, and dinner on time. 
and it, it's it's a blessing to have a girlfriend that knows because she's a nurse. She knows all the jargon, the rules. I know, but you've you're trained, and you went to school, and it's like it's just a relief to just have a girlfriend that just knows that shit. Because when you're sitting there, I don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. I just look mean at the nurse, like you better get this fucking thing done. You know, they just do it. Yeah, yeah and then but, but and then she, they then they see her know about the world, right? And and say the right things. Let me see the EKG, all these little medical things, right? And then they look at my parents in a different way. You know what I mean? Because now they fear that we're going to come back yeah. if something goes wrong. But um, I don't know much about that world. I, I'll be honest with you. I had never been to a fucking hospital really until I met Kalila and then my dad got sick, mm -hmm. which was all around the same time. So this is a whole new world. Like I've been to more hospitals, you know what I mean, in the last three years than I've ever have been. Yeah. And to see the world from what I, it's it's a scary system. It's to a scary Quincy system. To see Quincy Jones, yeah. you know, about his, with his cancer yeah. and yeah, all that and stuff, they, it's so scary. Quincy Jones has stage four cancer and they only started treating him well when they saw him on TV. And that's not right. That's so funny. As soon as he got on Ellen, all of a sudden, you well, know. Well, if you have cancer, get on Ellen. <laughs> Apparently that's the way. The yeah, you got to get on Ellen. Yeah, it's a fucked up system, and it's if a it's system. a it's a scary system because if you don't loudly advocate for yourself, and I mean advocate, just be stern and be firm, and you really have to push the issue almost, you're sort of fucked. You know, and I felt really bad for his parents because you know his mom is just like he didn't eat yet. You know, there was a gay comic named Steve Moore. He was from the '80s, and uh, when I started doing stand up, he was a headliner. He doesn't live in L.A. anymore, but um, he had HIV. But this is back when HIV was, the, the epidemic was new. You know, they didn't know about I, I didn't it. Know, but still they still Kaposi had the, sarcoma? No, but no, they still had the cocktails, but it was new. Yeah. But only like guys like Michael, Ma Magic Johnson could get them. The Richies. Yeah. So somebody set up a doctor's appointment for him, and he, I remember him telling me he had to beg the doctor, I will do anything, I'll do a show a free show for you and the doctors right now with my comic friends. Just please, can I get on the cocktails? Anyway, one thing led to another, and they did a show for doctors for free or whatever, and he, he was able to get on it. Wow. But it was stuck with me, that story of like, wow, if you weren't a comic, and you didn't have, he, had, he was friends with Robin Williams and some other mm -hmm. people that helped, I guess, you know what I mean? But like, if you didn't have those kind of connections and whatnot, you're dead. You're screwed, yeah. You're dead. He had to ask and beg and cry. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just like, it's a fucking crazy system. This whole thing. You know? So, what time are we at? <laughs> it's uh, one, we're good, 106. Oh, wait. Happy St. Totteringham's Day or belated. Mm. Mm hmm. I don't know what that is. I'm going to tell you what it is. You better know what the fuck it is. It's and from now on, okay? you don't ever ask that. I okay? E ask my it. equal. <laughs> All right. Hey bitch, my equal, yeah. <laughs> my lord commander. Yes, my lord. Just real quick, I'm an Arsenal FC fan. We took second in the league. The league's done. The season's over. But what happened was, Tottenham, our direct rivals, oh. were ahead of us. But the the point in the in the year where we know Arsenal knows that they're going to go ahead of Tottenham, is called Saint Totteringham's Day. So in this day of the year, there's absolutely no way Tottenham is going to surpass our points or beat us were in the ranking. But they were second place this for four months ahead of us, up until the last day, last game, so, last, last Sunday, match. and they lost. We won, which put gave us a point ahead of them. It was the best day of my life. So Tottenham could have actually won for the first beat us for the first time in twenty years. Yeah, or something oh, twenty like that. year run. Yeah, Damn. yeah, they almost and did until the last. They're match. more devastated by that than anything else in the year. That's crazy. Then losing the title the of the Leicester game. City. Just yeah. One game. I love you guys. Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalala. I love you too, Captain. <laughs> hey, Tiger Belly. I'm a half Chinese, half mulatto young man, and I was hoping Kay could speak her mind on mixed ethnicity and the search for ethnic uh, identity. So there's two questions. First, before we get to that, mm -hmm. the first one is, in regards to Asian casting, do the disproportionate white man slash Asian woman couples on TV bother you guys at all? That's an interesting question. Um, well, here's the thing is, is that it's the way you look at it. Because Asian women have had had a ten times easier time getting on film and TV in the last thirty years because of mm -hmm. the fact that they are objects of exotic mm -hmm. desire from these executives. Really, male, you know, the Hollywood's mm -hmm. run by mm -hmm. 
male white executives and obviously they have dicks and they they think that asian women are exotic Mm -hmm. and so they we wouldn't we were never used as males but in the last 10 years i mean the relationship between steve yoon's character and that other girl from walking dead is a revolutionary relationship Mm -hmm. um even having like daniel day kim and his korean wife in lost Lost is pretty good those kind of relationships have never been shown. And also now we have Fresh Off the Boat, Ken, you know what I mean? So we're, we know, we, it's getting better. Um, the proportions are still off. But for me, a, as long as I see improvement, uh, there's really not much to complain about. I mean, I could. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's getting better. And I've mm. been in this business for 20 years. And I remember when I first came here, they said, you're never going to work. Straight up just like, saying. Agents would just say, you're never going to work. Wow, and it's like they were wrong, mm-hmm. and because times have changed, diversity is hot. Right and now. also, that's what's great about that movie, that t- that book, Outliers. It talks about that. It talks about timing. A lot of success has to do with what year you're born, what generation you're born mm-hmm. into. So it's like I yeah. think I was I started at the right time, because in the '70s there were Asian male comics, but they were treated like fucking doormats. And they, they had accents and they relied on, like Johnny Yoon was one of the first Korean comics, and it, that was in the 1970s. Mm-hmm. And I know what his opening line was, because Argus told me, Argus, who's a comic that's 65, you know, you guys know I saw Argus him for the is. first time, that guy's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Whoa. So, he's good. He's great. <laughs> he's a legend. Argus told me that um, Johnny Yoon had a thick accent. And his first line, he would go up on stage, would not say anything for like a minute. So the audience is sitting there. And he would slowly go to the mic and go, had all. And that would get a three minute laugh. Wow. Saying Harold got a three minute laugh. That does the opposite. I mean, that's now. it that's like dancing monkey shit monkey shit. Mm. You know, and that's not you have to tell jokes, you have to have a structure. I mean, obviously. You know what it's like now, yeah. you know. But um, and for me, if it wasn't for Margaret Cho, seeing her on HBO, her special, I would have never done it. But when I saw her, I was just like, I think I can do it because she is seems like a sister, somebody that would like if I had a sister, she would be it because mm-hmm. she talked about, she said swear words, mm-hmm. she talked about edgy things that I like to talk about. Yeah. And it seemed very real to me. Mm-hmm. So um, my number one person that got me into comedy was Margaret. I've told her that before. Mm-hmm. She is so important to me. Wow. Yeah. Good night. We're not done Kalila. yet. The second half of the question. Oh, cool. For you, Kalila, speak on your mix, mixed ethnicity. So he's ha- he's half Chinese and he's half Mulatto. Why? Because Why? Cause Cause you're 100%? Percent, she's a per- yeah, 100% Korean. And you're the captain. So the captain gets to leave the room. I thought we were equals. <laughs> He just left the plane. Now we get to fly it. Okay. Kalila, can I have your portion of rice tonight? <laughs> so hungry. Uh, um, yes, yeah, he's half Chinese, half mulatto, and he just wanted you to speak uh, your mind on mixed ethnicity and the search for it, ethnic identity. Um, okay, so this is something that I struggled with when I first came from the Philippines because even when I met the Filipinos in the United States, they looked at me and to some people, I wasn't Filipino enough because I don't look Filipino. Yeah. Obviously, whatever that means, mm-hmm. because Filipino is such a mixed, mixed culture yeah. anyways, right? So to some, I didn't look Filipino enough, so I wasn't Filipino enough. And to the Filipinos that were raised here, I was too fobby. This is crazy. So yeah. I was too Filipino. And I always struggled with, am I or am I not? But then I'm also half this and a quarter this. And I, I determined this really young in my age, that first and foremost, I just really cared about being Kalila. Yes, living in the Philippines shaped me in, you know, into the person I am today, but very much the way living in Pasadena shaped me or being around, you know, being in America, living in Los Angeles. So for me, I stopped searching for an identity and just focused on my my individuality, irrespective of what race I am. Yes, we always talk about race on this podcast and it gets a little charged and we talk about the differences and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but those are... I, I never the reason I'm never threatened by the talk of it is because I never put myself in the category 
of ever being stereotyped anyways. I don't care about the stereotypes of Filipinos. I don't I don't get offended by those things because I never put myself in a category. I'm Kalila first and foremost, and it will always stay that way, regardless of where I was born or who raised me. You know, I, I hold Filipino values like to my heart because my mom's Filipina, but I don't I'm not conflicted in 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 my race i'm not conflicted mm -hmm. in what i don't need to feel ethnic I, that i need i don't need to know specifically what my ethnicity is because 50 years from now we're all going to be mixed anyways right yeah unless the kkk gets their way <laughs> um but but yeah like i i i don't know what to tell somebody who is mixed because they it's like this i had a friend a very very white friend who grew up in the philippines he literally looks like you george he identifies so much with being Filipino because he was born and raised there and he still lives there. Yeah. It's a guy who speaks fluent Bisaya, you know, and everyone looks at him like yeah. straight up. But he doesn't have a drop of Filipino blood. Mm -hmm. Right. But so where do you categorize him? But in himself, he is who he is first. Like he, he's proud of the fact that he, he's part of this culture. He knows the language. But I don't think that he's struggling to find out just how white he is or where he falls in, in the, the category whites. of, you know, in the spectrum yeah. of white people, yeah. you know? Um, um, so, yeah, I think it's different for everybody. My, my parents were very good about just making me feel proud of being multi-ethnic, ethnic, yeah. like mm -hmm. multicultural. And I, you know, I, I've never felt conflicted in that. The only, pe the only people who felt conflict, the only thing was pe people felt conflicted about me. I never felt conflicted about me. Other yeah. Filipinos felt conflicted about me when I got here, but not the other way around. And I always even tried to be like, oh, hey, like I tried to make friends with them. Like, hey, I'm from Cebu. And some of them were like, nah, bitch, you're too Bobby. Yeah, it's so <laughs> you weird. Know? Yeah. I'm like, God, like you guys are mean. Like, no, I'm just, I grew up there. Yeah. How do you yeah. want me to speak? Filipino, yeah. You know? Be, le be less Fabi. Please. Less hard consonants. You step Don't up. over accentuate your T's, but it's just, you know, it's what it is. So there you go, Michael. Uh, you have Chinese, half mulatto. That's a great mix. That's that's like um, Tyson Beckford. Like. Oh, he's like that too. Actually, no. Tyson Beckford is half Jamaican, half Chinese. That's he's interesting. Mulatto. Yeah. Uh, any shows for Bobby? Uh, Top of your no, head. not this week, and not next week. He has a Bakersfield show coming up, actually, but I don't know the specifics of that. He hasn't told me. Um, did another you Bakersfield? Talk yeah, another one, and you're you're actually opening for him. So what? <laughs> Get your shit ready. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about um, the fights this past weekend? Because they oh, were yeah. good. Guys, UFC, if, if you don't like mixed martial arts, You can turn it off now. exit now. Exit we're just the gonna, building. Yeah, we're going to run it a little bit. Uh, UFC 198 in Curitiba, Brazil. I just learned how to say it properly because I kept Curitiba? hearing Curitiba. Because I used Curitiba. to say Curitiba. Hi, like it's, Cur fucking, it's Curitiba. Like a dumb American. Welcome to Curitiba. Curitiba, Brazil. It was a stadium show, 45,000 people. Very big show. Probably the second largest audience to roger center because i think sweden only had forty thousand. Uh, and dude the brazilians were on a roll for a while there before the main card they kept they were winning man they were winning winning and then shogun won shogun um um, um nogueira won nogueira won that was such a crazy cyborg won sorry but who I'm, i I like now i like her even though you said she, she's not likable who cyborg no, I didn't say she wasn't likable i like cyborg i think she wasn't likable no i didn't think you. leslie oh leslie yeah She's weird. I didn't think she was as likable. No, I like Cyborg. I, I think that it was unfair that she had taken roids in the past. That's, yeah, fucked up. And, um, you know, given that Usada is really strict on drug testing now, I hope that, you know, she has a long career, you Gets know, PED paid, free. It gets paid because she's been the Because that bitch can fucking fight, for man. such a long time, yeah. man. She beat Gina Carano. I know. She actually girl. put Gina Carano out for good. Yeah. She canceled her career. Hey, Gina. And I like movies. how Leslie Smith, I didn't like it, but Leslie Smith was saying that she thought it was an early stoppage. Yeah, she, the camera panned her and she said, fuck that. I was still awake. Fuck that. Did a ref save her from imminent death, death. man? She was going to die. <laughs> you would, if you guys watched the fight, she was about to die. Yeah. But the, the biggest heartache of the night was oh, when man. that entire arena went silent, when Fabrizio Verdum got knocked the fuck out that yes. was a bad knockout like oh, it, it was when he got knocked out the ref was like stay down yeah not t, not he, tko ko he was doing the agonal breathing 
You know that type of like reverse <laughs> breathing. Eyes roll back. Yeah. Toes curl. Yeah. And Stipe is the best. It's just silence, and he just jumps over. I'm world champion. I'm world champion. It was cute. Completely silent though. It was cute. Yeah. There you go, Cleveland. You don't need the Cavaliers to win a championship. You got one, Stipe, and a yeah. Croatian. And I like that he's just you know a hometown paramedic, right? This yes, he works that job still too. So I guess he doesn't have to. Be I mean, a paramedic but, anymore. but he's not going to be a high paid MMA fighter either, which is a pity. He's a champion. Right. And yeah. he's got like this fucking vicious knockout God. in this other guy's hometown. But believe it or not, he's not even going to make a 15th of what Conor McGregor makes. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But um, yeah, guys, the craziness. Yeah, but it was a really good card. I didn't watch the early prelims, but um, I read up on it, and it it's was good. Card. Yeah, good card. I Even watched it illegally, of... and I'm ashamed of myself. Wow, don't do say they that, not cause... show fights in Arizona? They do. No, because you I fight didn't. Pass. No, I have Fight Pass. Brought Mother Tiger Belly. Of course, I fucking have Fight Pass. <laughs> good. Let's keep saying Fight Pass. Tiger Belly brought by Fight Pass. <laughs> I was. I have Fight Pass, I've, and I I usually buy the fights on which is UFC TV. You can just. Yeah, click yeah, yeah, and pay yeah. mm-hmm. Bobby and I have traveled everywhere but there's some cities that we can't access that am I just like not aware of, like what cities I can't thought, I access I, that I, that's weird that you wouldn't be able to go on UFC TV and get that so yeah this is a shout out to you Dana White fix your shit <laughs> I don't know if it's Dana White. I think it might be the state because if they restrict certain types of like viewing it has no nothing way. to do with the UFC really alright guys we've talked about this way enough. too much uh, um, what else you got anything to plug Gilbert no uh <laughs> Uh, what's the address for our, a P.O. box? Oh. Uh, really quick. You do it. You announce it. Guys, if you want to send us some packages, we'll open them on air. We'll record them. Uh, the, why does it say Bobby's name? Uh, it's the Tiger Belly, and the address is 1626 Wilcox Avenue, Hollywood, California, 90028-6206. And um, for all your questions and unhelpful advice segment, um, what do you call it? I don't know. Questions? Questions. Questions. <laughs> um, please write us at to please write. God, fucking shit. I don't know. Uh, number 161. Did you say that? And it is sweet 161. We're not. We're, we got to lock it up. Lock it up. If you have questions for our unhelpful <laughs> advice segment or would just like to inquire about anything Tiger Belly related, kindly write us to thetigerbelly at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram at Tiger Belly and on Twitter at the Tiger Belly. Also, you can follow Kalila on Snapchat and all social media at Calamity K. If you want to see snaps of my cat, Licking its dick. And they, oh, Jesus. Okay. That's all there is. It's just my cats. And make sure you follow George Kimmel at Gilbert. Have a good night. We'll see you next week. Ciao. Bye. Cano da pacate